Okay, you're in Google Docs and you want to insert a table of contents. Now your first step is to apply heading styles to the text that you want to appear inside your table of contents. So I'll show you what I mean. This is the first heading that I want to appear in the table of contents. So I click into it and then I go up to the toolbar and where it currently says normal text, I change that to a heading style. So I'm going to choose heading one because this is a main heading. I'm going to do the same here and the same here. Now, if you have subheadings like I do here, you can apply a different heading style. So I click into this first subheading and I'm going to select heading two. I do the same here and the same here. And if you have sub subheadings, you've got this heading three style. Right, now we've identified the headings we want to appear in our table of contents. We're gonna click in our document where we want the table of contents to appear. Then you go to the insert tab at the top here. Then you go all the way to the bottom of the menu and you select one of these thumbnails. Now I'm just gonna select the first one here, plain text. I can always change it to one of these other options later on. And here's my table of contents. Now say I introduce another heading, which I then want to appear in the table of contents. What I can do is go down to that heading. So let's say it's fungicides here. I apply a heading style. So I'll say that's a main heading. Then I go back up to my table of contents, click into it, and I can see this little refresh button here. Press it and that new heading then appears in my table of contents. Now let's look at formatting the table of contents. To do that, click on these three little dots here and then go to more options. And that'll bring up a task pane on the right of your screen. Now you've got some preset styles up here. So for example, plain text is what we chose for our table of contents. But if I go to the second preset, you can see I get dotted lines between the heading and the page number. Now I can change those what are called tab leaders by using this drop down. So I could have dashed lines or I could have a solid line. I can also select whether I want to show page numbers or not. Now the third option shows the headings as links and that makes it obvious to the user that they can click on these headings to navigate to a certain part of the document. So for example, if I click on a heading and then click on the link here, it would take me to that part of the document. However, if I select one of these other styles and click on a heading, I also get that option to navigate to that part of the document. So the hyperlink functionality is still there, whether or not you use that blue style table of contents. Now, if I go down to heading levels here, I can select which level of headings to show in my table of contents. So let's say I didn't want to show heading twos in my document, my subheadings, I could just untick that option in the list. I'll reinstate it. And the other thing you can do is you can specify the indentation for the different levels of headings. So for example, I might want to increase the indent for heading twos. You can see that there in my table of contents. Now, the other thing I would probably do is increase the line spacing between the entries in the table of contents. And I can do that just by selecting the table of contents, going up to format on the menu, line and paragraph spacing, and choose something like 1.15 or 1.5. If you want a different font for your table of contents, then just go up to the font menu and choose a different font. If at any point you want to get rid of your table of contents, then just click into it, go to these three little dots again, and choose remove table of contents. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.